Nick Burke said that calcium is harder to absorb from pasteurized dairy. Is that true? Uh, no. At the end of the day, the only time, remember the, there are a certain, in, certain um, receptor sites that actually take in calcium in the gut and they are vitamin D, um, you know, you need vitamin D. If you don't have vitamin D um, and you're vitamin D deficient, then you cannot absorb as well the calcium. So that's a prerequisite. Then the, the level of calcium that is required depends on the genetics. Remember that those people that have got 24% of the population have poor genetics and they poorly absorb calcium from meat. So they need more calcium, like me, more calcium to consume in order to get to the threshold because the receptor sites take less. So you need to push more. So it's like an efflux, like, you know, a pressure differential of more going to those sites that actually forces the, the body to take more of that. So it works a bit different with people that have got those genetics. Um, and so that's how that sort of works. But uh, pasteurised milk, what, what would that have an effect? Um, you know, it's not going to have a lot of vitamin D. And, uh, you know, if you're already deficient, the vitamin D in the actual pasteurised, the lack of in the raw milk isn't going to make much of a difference until it gets assimilated into your body, convert, goes through all the conversions and is made available to those cells in those receptors that take it in. So that makes no logic um, to me. You know, at the end of the day, when the your body takes in, um, it denatures everything in the acidic stomach. It breaks everything down, the fats, the and they get further emulsified in the 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 first part of the with with biles, bile salts. At a, when they get into the into the small intestine, but until then they get broken down. Um, the proteins get broken down to polypeptides and some and some amino acids. They get further broken down when they get into the gut. Um, the minerals um, also, because of the acidity, get released out of the actual um, the food matrix. What, whatever food you're eating depending on the chelating factors if it's a plant. And then once you've you've got that um, sort of release, it gets ionized by the actual um, the stomach itself and then so it can then be absorbed by those um, those receptor sites. So I'd, I'd say show me the science. Um, so no. <laughs> People make a lot of claims you know against pasteurized dairy um, for a lot of reasons. My sort of view has always been that you will lose vitamin C, you will lose um, some B vitamins, you will have a reduced amount of lactoferrin. So there's a number of things you reduce. You end up with more macros um, and, and a small reduction in micros but it depends on which micros, and it's usually the B vitamins, not minerals. Um, so minerals don't get um, lost from, from pasteurization. So, yeah, I'd, I'd say show me the science. I haven't seen any literature showing me anything like that. You know, I've seen literature showing that you get a reduction in certain things, but definitely not um, um, calcium. And what does pasteurization have to do with the absorption of calcium ions is beyond me. You know, once it actually gets broke, denatured in the actual and broken from the food matrix in the stomach and then um, gets ionized, so it has a, um, the right ionic um, charge so it can actually be taken up by those receptor sites. You know, has the person actually read any of the... Um, sufficient stuff on the physiology of this sort of stuff on how calcium is absorbed in the gut. Maybe they haven't. Um, I, I I think this is an old paleo type myth um, that still persists to this day, and a lot of people still believe it. So, like a lot of they, you know, like the the poofer stuff. 
that existed for quite some time. And still, there are a lot of people that still believe in the animal poo for being a problem. I've shown you guys with research, good research, that that's not the case. It's nonsense. So, nah. Um, I always, when people say things like that, I usually, you should you should ask him, leave a comment, please provide me the evidence. Um, so you can't claim something without, you have to, if you're going to claim something, you have to have somebody to back it up. You know, with me, I claim things, but I've got the evidence to back it up. And sometimes people go, well, Harry, and I haven't made the video and I'll put it on the screen in a live stream if I've got it available. Otherwise, I'll leave something in the comments or I'll do a video just to make the point. So, you know, I won't say things that I don't have evidence for. So that's why I get a lot of arguments with a lot of people in the carnival community I have for a while, you know, on the calcium side and all sorts of things, because I know that these genetics exist and they affect GLP-1, they affect blood sugar, they affect um, arrhythmias and they do all these sort of things because I've actually looked at the stuff. But people will basically go, oh, you know, you can get all your, all your, um, your calcium through meat. Really? Have you really checked the literature properly, thoroughly, and the genetic um, changes in the last uh, 10,000 years? Hmm, I bet you haven't for making that claim. A lot of people make claims. I've never made a claim that I can't back up. And otherwise, if I do say something, I'll say it's speculation. I've looked at it, and the likelihood that it's something else, but it's still speculation, and I will tell you that. So, yeah, unfortunately, not everyone will.